What's up guys, it's your boy Jameka here, coming at you with another deck tech. This is my uh, green-black Whip of Erebos deck. Um, so this deck has a lot of different like, inspirations from here and there. Uh, my first inspiration to this deck was actually uh, GB Prague. I was watching a, the modern GP, and Hard to Scale's Vinity one, spoiler alert. But um, if you don't know what that deck does, Hard to Scale is just kind of like, puts an extra counter on things. But if it has a plus one, plus one counter, just put an extra one on there. I was wondering, is there like an effect like that for Penny Dreadful? And there is, kind of. It's called Corpse Shack Menace. Um, but it, like, at the more I started, so I built a deck around Corpse Shack Menace. That's where it started. I had four of, and I had a bunch of other like things that got counters. And um, uh, basically, I, I found out though the card's like really like a win more card. So um, <laughs> like the card was good, but like it was like sick when you got it out because it's, it's, it's so. It's so expensive. It's like a four drop, so you get to turn through like a Golgari Signet, and like your late game stuff's really. Good. I really was, I was kind of like Widmore. I was probably doing well because I had another little engine, and first of all, shout out to Pseudo Dude, um, the Australian Master, who uh, had this deck. He played against me um, in a tournament. It was Veril's with like Eternal Scourge, and that combination is kind of insane. So like, if you have an Eternal Scourge in your graveyard, you can scavenge it with Veril's, and then you can cast the Eternal Scourge back from your exile pile. I thought that synergy was like really neat. Like he had like a really like loose shell to it. I'll post his list. Uh, he actually has two lists now. He has that, and he has like one that's more of, like aristocratic. That also I really like. I'll post those lists in the uh, comment section below, or sorry, in the description below. But um, anyways, I'm trying to I've, I've decided to utilize that in my corpse jack deck, and then I realized that I whip a barabos barrels. It's kind of the same thing. Like um, the whip will exile the the eternal scourge. And then you cast back to Eternal Scourge. So it makes this like ridiculous sort of like uh, loop for um, the fight control deck. So it's really neat. So I've kind of built a deck just kind of around like Whip, Corpse Jack Menace, Verils, things like that. Just kind of like a green black sort of Whip deck. Whip mid range value deck. So let's just get right into it. Um, mana base, forests, got swamps, Sand Step Citadels. Um, need the third color. Or um, a converged spell here. Uh, Okina, Temple of Grandfathers. There are a couple of legends in the deck. Actually, just one, just a Veril's. But it's like a free forest, so it doesn't matter. It just has like random incidental value. And all like, Rogue's Passage. I was having a hard time actually, like, I don't have like trample stuff in my deck, so this is kind of just like I have a free roll. You kind of um, use this in the late game to try to kill your opponent. Um, some utility cards, Lay Bear of the Heart, uh, Gagari Sega helps you ramp. Lay Bear is kind of like a the thought sees of the of the format really it's just kind of everywhere it's pretty decent um single bone ilea it's pretty great with a couple other cards it puts counters gains life um shoots flyers like that papal truce is my uh sort of uh converged spell that i want just uh drawing three cards is fine generally will happen most of the time with sans but drawing two is okay too uh putrefied just a solid rule spell kills artifacts too there are relevant artifacts like other signets um Mostly just sing hits for the most part. Uh, talk, already talked about Verils and Turtle Scourge. Shambling Shell is another card um, that I started with the Corpse Jack deck. And then um, I had Whip in that deck too. So the Dredge part was really nice. So uh, you can just kind of fill your graveyard with these other creatures for the Whip. Maybe find the Turtle Scourge. Uh, one card I'm not playing with is actually Demonic Consultation because of things like the Whip of Verabos. So I don't think it's very good to exile everything. Because it only like really affects Eternal Scourge. You don't get a ton of value out of things. And it's not like uh, this deck is looking for specific bullets. Or just like, I need the four of this card or I'm going to win the game. It's just kind of like, you just kind of like, you know, draw the cards as you will. And um, kind of, they're kind of good at certain spots. So this is not really a demonic consultation deck. I, I think it's more of just like graveyard value centric deck. And you don't want thing, all the things exiled. You only want the really exiled Eternal Scourge all the time. So, uh, but yeah, Shadowly Shell is good. I mean, it's a 3 one for 3, it's fine. Puts counter on things, and then it dredges. So, with the uh, Corpse Jack Menace, it'll just put two counters. Not bad. Uh, or talk about Whip, it's pretty good. The Life League part is just like a staple, it's just like randomly stapled it on, but it really helps you like fight races against like uh, Mono Red, uh, other aggro decks, things like that. Uh, Damage Girl Life, another solid dude, you know. Um, 4 4 for 5. Has his own scavenge ability, so you don't really need the uh, Verils to uh scavenge it on but um yeah if you end up the scavenge again you have a corpse check man so you can make a 10 10 somewhere um the big beaters here uh spearmonger is just a solid overall card for uh the Golgari. 
guild. <laughs> I was gonna say tribe, but they're not really a tribe. I think it's like a guild, like a group. But uh, yeah, you know, just solid stats. Also gets himself counters when it kills creatures. You know, regenerates, changes colors, things like that. Fiskillian is like kind of the big payoff for like uh, Corpse Jackman, which really was the whole thing. I just want to put counters to the thing and shoot people. Uh, I love Triskelion, if you don't know. If you remember the Wild Pair videos from a couple seasons back, Triskelion is like one of my favorite cards. Uh, it's good with Bow and Ilea, so if you attack with a Triskelion, you have all the counters on it. While, you, while it's attacking, it has Death Touch, and you can just ping down everybody. So um, it's good with Verils, you know, you can scavenge onto the uh, Triskelion and make more counters. Especially with Corsair Pants, it just goes nuts. If you play this and then play this, you make a 7-7. Seven -seven. Um, that's that's great. <laughs> uh, sideboards, um, a lot of anti-aggro stuff. Moment of Craving here, Flaying Tendrils, also good against Aristocrats. Cradle Extraction, people like to hate on like the more side effects for the most part. It is probably the most overplayed, but I think for the most part, Penny Dreadful, there's a lot of like, um, the way people play, build decks, and this is myself included, is that they build around certain cards. Like There's like singular win conditions, like Approach of the Second Sun. Order's red cap. Um, you'll say the morning star, things like that. So like, it's really good to get to get that out of there. You know, so it's like a necessary evil. It's like it's not like the greatest card, but the way most decks are built with sort of a semi-linear strategy. Uh, cranial stacks is really great. Things like that. Curse of Death hold pretty great against like tokens, other like aristocrat decks. Guy's Revenge, more anti-control stuff, uh, Naturalize, just, you know, a disenchant effect. And then Necrogenesis for, like, you know, Living Death. Um, you can um, exile your own creatures. If you have an Eternal Scourge, you can exile your own Eternal Scourges. But it's mostly for, like, you know, other reanimation strategies. It's a little expensive to kind of activate, but I think it's, like, better than Withered Wretch. It's easier to cast, and um, it's an enchantment, so enchantments are kind of harder to deal with for the most part. Uh, so I'm going to run this through a league today, so you're going to get five awesome rounds of this deck. So see what's good. Alright, we've got a match with a uh, dreadful green-black whip death. Um, this game's okay. Just draw some more links. Up for some reason. Or some lagging. <laughs> this is like more of like a classic like mid range rock style deck. My opponent is like a little Pegasus, so it's probably some sort of like white weenie aggro strategy. I think I'm fine against, especially post board. Um, I would lay bear here, but I think I want to actually signet because I might want to kill something. I don't draw a third lane. Oh, why is there another question mark? I've never seen this. It was like a question mark right on my curve. I don't know why it's there all of a sudden. I've, I've never noticed that. If it's something new. I don't have a question about what this is. It's a swamp. I don't know if you can... Yeah, you can count. Wow, super go wide here. Um, um I'll just play the Eternal Scourge just to block the uh, servos here. I think I play the Whip of Erebos, and I think Racing will just... It depends on, like, what my opponent has. Like, if he has some sort of a uh, Anthem effect, then, then maybe Racing is a little more difficult. I think just playing, like, Eternal Scourge and the Whip is going to be strong. Match. But even if he kills it, then, like, you know. Back, you know, uh, the flyers are a little annoying. I think you just kind of alpha here. Oh, okay. 
He's just a lot more time to set up. I haven't went to Future Price at the ready though, so something like crazy happened. Start popping something. Oh, it's like it's not like really mana efficient to kill a one one, one of these, or just, this is like killing half a creature. Uh, this is not a big deal um, because I'm gonna really cast it. It gets targeted, and then Wait, although I do lose a blocker, so I'm gonna take like eight here. That's kind of annoying. Um, Yeah, I definitely might just get like shipped out. Castle Lay Bear, see what's going on. Dust Walker, Bathe and Light. Well, Bathe and Light doesn't really do anything against my uh, Eternal. I mean, Bathe and Light can like protect the creatures from like the Putrefy, so I have the. Be wary of that. Might be able to outrace this. In fact, he is able to outrace this. Well, if he attacks and then I attack, then it's like... I'm gonna gain like 6 overall. The math gets a little. Although you can tackle just a Pegasus. Pegasus tack it together. They count each other. Kind of neat. Actually, kind of neat. <laughs> so I kind of have to attack at this point. Just to mitigate this. Signet. Hamling Shell. Um, I could put a counter on this and then start dredging. I think that might be the play. I'm trying to get something big and then like get a big attack in with the whip. If I draw like a Triskillion off the whip, it's really good because I can shoot a million things. <laughs> Alright, he's going for the... Um... Although this only affects like the white creatures. Not that bad. Yeah, he's attacking with those creatures. That doesn't really. I will block, and then I'll get the dredge. I want to trade here. That might kill me. <laughs> that was exactly eleven. G. Okay. Um, I have a bunch of wrath effects here. Oh, what a craving seems good. This seems really good. What cuts? Able true slow. Um, that's really slow. I all the lay bear the heart. It's not really that fast. Really like super necessary. I just keep all the late game stuff. Yeah, that seems fine. Um, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> I was like, I need a good hand here. I was gonna say, let's need a good hand, but well, that's a good hand. <laughs> all right. <laughs> this is all dude removal. I was gonna get really sick of this. <laughs> it's like all sideboard cards here. Uh, 
Um, I'm actually gonna play the swap next in case he has some sort of like enchant. Um, I might just kill this now. Yeah, I might just kill this now so I just like protect it. A terrible idea. Also, there's epic return. Especially the things like Bathe and Light, you might like randomly protect this creature. I, I doubt I doubt that would be something that would be good. Oh, that has to die too. Everything must be killed. Everything. I hope to draw a land. I just want to play a Deadish Goliath. Um. Ah, eh, screw it. I'll just drop this Flying Tendrils. I have two now, so... <laughs> I didn't draw a land, unfortunately, so I'm gonna have to wait a second. I'm gonna have to wait a bit to, like, actually play a threat. Okay. The Elite's not very good on its own. Alright, I found a creature. I love Shambling Shell. Um, it's just like another like kind of like grindy sort of card that just never really truly really dies unless you exile it. So it's kind of nice. Can't unfortunately I can't put a, a counter on their creatures. There's one card left. I've been only attacking for like two a turn. I'm kind of still at 23. So I'm not really like threatened right now. Good, I drew, I drew a land. Isn't there sort of like Banisher Priest type effect? That's pretty good. If it's actual Banisher Priest, it's fine because I can just play 10 of The Fairgrounds Rodin does live through my two spells. We need to think twice about attacking now. Okay, I guess a 5-5 is enough. I guess that's enough. Well, a really early concession. <laughs> that was like a super early concession. I don't know what's in your opponent, my opponent's deck, but that was the earliest concession. <laughs> Back. Not hand was like bonkers though. Um, this hand's okay. The bone Ilya does shoot down like the loyal Pegasus, Pegasi, Pegasus, Pegasuses, and this will help the go wide. If he goes like you know turn one one drop, then like a bunch of like servo exhibitions, this will just kind of clean it up. And then I have like Triskelion bow, which is kind of good. <laughs> Hopefully they don't play like a, a turn three and that would be fortunate. I would like to see like turn three or more creatures that die to flame tendrils. That's a smart I think that's the right move. You don't want to exert it until it needs evasion or whatever reason. Um Oh, I drew an Eternal Scourge. I could Eternal Scourge here, or I could just, like, clean this up. I think I just want to clean this up. I don't, the only thing you can have is, like, a charge, which they've shown in their deck. So maybe I just play Eternal Scourge to block for now. They have charge. It's pretty good.
Storm Scourge will just block, but I feel like a Fairgrounds Warden, then it's like I lose a lot of tempo. I'd rather just have them use a charge to save their creature, I guess. Okay. It's like a it's gonna kill one thing. Unless he has double charge. Then I'm I'm fine of using double charge on this. Right, okay. Yeah, the thing is, if they remove my creature, then I just like I take like more damage. This this means I only take two. And he still has nothing, so his hand's probably just reactive. Oh, that's good. That's a good spell. So I might get beat by the bait and light here, but I gotta try. Yeah, that's fine. He's not really like advancing his board, so like, it's completely okay by me. Or, bye. What are the chances you think he has another Bathe and Light? What are the chances here? Now I feel great. If I draw the sixth land, feeling comes down and like, it'll just kill anything he plays. Then I get the bow down, and then that's all gravy. Spearmonger is pretty decent. Um, I'll play a Spearmonger. Can't regenerate right now. I know it's a big slam. But a Spearmonger. A loyal Pegasus. Can he block? Can't block. He can't block. Ooh, combo. Um. Uh, the bow's here to like double green. Oh, sorry, I'm just lagging a little bit. But here's a bow. Eventually, start gaining me life. All the life I've lost. Sundering growth. Unfortunately, Pegasus cannot block alone. This flies in the air, waiting for a companion. Waiting in the looking looking out yonder. Oh, my opponent's flooded a bit. Pretty tough in the uh, white weedy. They just get flooded. Um, Sigma's nice. Girls. A lot of reactionary spells. A ton of I think those are I mean those are good against the whip. I mean it's really important. The whip. I don't even think that's important right now to just kill that. But this is a lethal, it's a lethal attack. Um maybe it doesn't draw another creature to block. Actually, the that that was a fine kill because I have six drops in my hand, so it kind of just like I have a land structure. Ah, that's a good draw. Oh, I could sacrifice this to scavenge onto the uh, barrels. <laughs> it's really it's really aggressive. Um, he's like another one of these. I don't think. Yeah, let's just do it. It's, just, it's a super aggressive line. Because <laughs> if he has like another like Fairgrounds Warren, it's like that. But this like threatens a lethal attack. 
I drew the line. Um, and then, like, in, in another turn, like, I could just Rogue's Passage through. But this forces a block. He doesn't have, like, a protection spell or something like that. I could have also Eternal Scourged there. <laughs> But I I didn't guarantee I wasn't guaranteed to draw a six land. Like I said, this is a lethal attack. You kind of have doesn't. So now this is super lethal. He needs to deal with the creature now. He needs to draw another Fairgrounds Warden or something like that. Otherwise, he just dies. Draws another land. Well, I mean, that's about that's about how that matchup goes. Just kind of just control the board, and then eventually play a big threat. 